Hey gang, so it is time for our fall final exam review. All right, so here we go. We're going to start off. This is going to be the video for Teak number two. I got my calculator. I am ready to go. I'm going to set the uh, darkness on here, I'm trying to get it to where y'all can see it a little better. If you do not have a calculator, no worries. Um, I will try and put mine under here so that you can always see it whenever we're working on it. But anyway, otherwise, grab your calculator. And let's get to it. We want to show all the work. All right, glasses are on. Which line is parallel to the y equals 3 over 2x minus 2 and passes through the point 6, negative 1? Parallel lines have the same slope. So I'm going to look here, and my slope on this is 3 over 2. It passes through this point. So I have a point, I have a slope. I'm going to do y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1 y minus blank equals blank times x minus blank. You are going to fill this in. x is my 6, y is my negative 1, and we're going to put our slope in there. All right, go ahead and keep working it. 3 over 2, negative 1 is my y, so negative 1, my x is 6. Now remember, and we always talk about this, when you have two negatives, remember you bump them together and make a gigantic positive before you start working this problem. So y plus 1 equals hippity hoppity distributed property. 3 over 2x. Positive times a negative is a negative. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do 6 times alpha y equals 3 on top, 2 on bottom. Thank you. So it's 9. So this is going to be minus 9. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. So that's going to give me y equals, those will cancel out. 3 over 2x, negative 9, negative 1 is a negative 10. And there is my answer. All right, on to the next one. Write the equation of a line that passes through 4, negative 2, and it's perpendicular to this one. So remember, perpendicular slopes, or lines, have flipped and switched uh, slopes. So my slope on this one is negative 2. Flip it and switch it. Put it over 1, flip it would make it 1 over 2. It's negative, so when I switch it, it becomes a positive. So here's my slope, here's my line. Here we go, y minus blank equals blank times x minus blank. All right, fill in the blanks. I'm going to give you just a few seconds to get it filled in the way you think it goes, and then I'll fill it in. All right, my slope is 1 half, my x is 4, my y is negative 2. Before I can start solving, I need to get rid of those double negatives. So bump them together, make a gigantic positive. y plus 2 equals hippity hoppity distributive property. 1 half x minus 1 half times 4. Half of 4 would be 2. I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. So y equals 1 half x minus 4. All right, so now let's take a look at number three. Pause the video if you're still working on the other one. Take a second and read that. All right, we're doing domain and range. Domain is how wide is it? That's the x-axis. Range is how tall is it? All right, so let's take a look at this. This one I notice has open circles. Open circles means it's not equal to. I do notice that I'm continually drawing on this one and on this one. If I put my pencil down and draw, then that's going to be continuous. So that means X is going to look like this and Y is going to look like this. Now, I need to figure out how wide is this? Well, it goes from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So negative 6. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oh, it looks like positive 6. So negative 6 to positive 6. Now that encompasses all this right in here. Do I actually equal? No. Those are open. What that means is I don't put the line underneath. It doesn't equal it. How tall is it? Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, so it goes up to 4 and down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It goes down to negative 5 down here. Yeah. 
which is smaller, negative 5 or 4? Negative 5 to 4. So there's my boundaries. It goes down to negative 5 and up to 4. And it goes from negative 6 all the way over to 6. All right, so here is my domain and range. Take a second. I'm going to give you about 20 seconds to do this. I'm going to wait for you to do it. I am going to notice that it is continuous. If it's continuous, we're going to set it up as x and y. Okay. All right, here we go. I'm going to zoom in on that just a little bit so you can see a little bit better. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I go out to negative seven and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven this way. So my boundaries are negative seven to seven. Do I actually equal negative seven? I do because it's colored in dark. So that does equal. Do I actually equal seven? No, it's open because it's an open circle here, so I don't put the line underneath it. Okay, now let's switch gears and let's do how tall is it. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it goes all the way up to six. One, two, three, and down here to negative three. Well, do I actually, oh, which one's smaller? Yeah, negative, negative three is smaller. 6 is the biggest. Okay, do I actually equal negative 3? And you're like, no, you don't, because it's an open circle. But over here, I do equal negative 3. So I'm going to say that I do equal negative 3. Do I actually go through 6 right here? Yeah, I do. So I actually equal 6 right there. So on my range, I do equal both of them. All right, that was good. All right, so here we go. Write the equation that to represent the line below. All right, slope intercept, y equals mx plus b. So y equals mx plus what? What's the b? B is the y-intercept. Where do I cross the y-axis? One, two, three. I cross it three. Hmm, what's the slope of this line? Well, there's a point here and a point here. Rise over run. See if you can find that slope. It's going to be positive because it's going up. One, two, three, four, five, six. I rise up six. One, two, three. And I run over three. Rise up six. Run over three. So my slope is two. When you can simplify this, you want to simplify this. And if you're not sure if it simplifies, then go to your calculator. Do your alpha y equals and put in 6 on top with 3 on bottom and see if it simplifies. Don't give me a fraction that you can still simplify. Your test is going to be multiple choice, so you won't have to worry about that, but you want to always be sure that you do simplify. Now, don't miss this down here. This says give it to me in standard form. Standard form, just a reminder, x, um, no, let's do this, no fractions, no frac, x and y on the same side and we need a happy x all right so i'm going to take this there are already no fractions so i'm done with that but i need x and y on the same side so y equals 2x plus 3. i'm going to move the x to the other side already your brain went move the x divide the y no not on this one minus 2x plus y equals 3. All right, x and y on the same side, done. Hmm, is x happy? No, he's really not. He's kind of sad over here. He's negative. So in order to make him happy, I just need to change his sign to positive, which means I need to change this sign. Now we've got a negative y equals, and we need to change this one, negative 3. That is standard form. A lot of the stuff on your test you're going to take is going to be in standard form. All right, Zach hires a plumbing company to come repair uh, his kitchen pipes. They charge him $45.99 per hour, plus a service call of $135. Answer the equations um, below 
if x represents the number of hours planning in Zach's house and y represents total cost. Okay, equation, domain, and range. All right, we can do that. So let's just set up the equation for this. Here's what I know. He's charging me $45.99 every hour that he's at my house. Just to come to my house is $135. I need to become a plumber because they make a lot more money than me. So $135 just to walk in my door plus $45.99 for every hour that he works. So here's my equation. So y equals 135 plus 4599x. Okay, so let's look at the domain of this. Now the domain is the x value. So I'm going to kind of do a rough sketch here. X would be representing, and if you look, X represents the number of hours. So, plumber guy comes to my house, he spends one hour. He could spend two hours, three hours, four hours, and so on. We're going to kind of just get a rough glance of this. Could he spend a half an hour at my house? He sure could. So we need to keep in mind that this is probably continuous because I could... He might be at your house 1.2 hours or 2.3 hours. So there's a whole lot of decimal points inside here that he could actually be at our house. Just to come to my house, he's going to charge me how much? Yeah, $135 just to come in the door. If he stays for one hour, let's look at this. If he stays $135 plus $45.99, that's my one hour mark, right? It's 180, so it'd be, we'll just put it right here, we'll, we'll call that 180.99. If he stays for another hour, 135 plus 2 times 45.99, okay? Boy, I'm telling you, this guy's making a killing. 226.98. So it's going to keep going up, right? The longer he stays, the more money it's going to cost. But like we already kind of talked about, he he could stay just a half an hour, so it'd be kind of right in here. So all of these points, my graph is going to look something like this. So let's talk about domain and range. X is the number of hours. Well, he could walk in the door, I guess, and leave. So he could come, not come at all. And then we would say X is less than or equal to. How many hours could he stay? Did it say he had a maximum hour he could stay? He didn't. So really, this could go to infinity, right? Another way to write this so that it doesn't look quite so mathy, if you will, we could take this infinity part off, and we could just read it backwards. X is greater than or equal to zero, because it's the time, right? So we could just say that, well, my X value starts here, but it goes on and on and on this way. X is just bigger than zero because it's time. It, who knows how, how long he's at your house. Where would my Y value start? $135, right. So I would say, let's do this. The lowest my Y value is is $135 because he's going to charge me $135 just to come ring my doorbell. On and on and on. Who knows? The sky's the limit. How much plumbing do I need? Another way to write this would just be to say y is greater than or equal to 135. I'm going to put like a semicolon here because they mean the same thing. I think on your test they're going to look more like this, but I feel like if you wrote it this way, you could figure this part out. You'd be like, well, where's infinity? Okay, well, what if I just cover up infinity? Read it backwards. X is bigger than zero. <coughs> I think you'd be okay there. All right, moving on. Alright, here we go. Now, don't look at this one and go, oh, I'm not doing this one, it's too long. Don't worry. We're going to work, work our way through it. Mm. I don't have an answer key, so we're just going to muddle through this together. John has to buy two different kinds of rope. Rope A costs 60 cents per foot, and rope B costs 90 cents per foot. John needs to buy at least 15 feet of rope. But he wants to spend no more than $18. Show and describe all the combinations of number of feet 
each type of rope John can buy on the graph below. Oh boy, here we go. Okay, so my whole camera froze right in the middle after I realized I was already talking and working. Okay, so back to this one again. We're looking at a system, and I think we're looking at an inequality because I see words like no more than and describe the combination. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm looking at a system here. So here's what I know. I know that I need 15 feet, and I need to buy at least 15 feet. So I need to buy greater than or equal to 15 feet. But I want to spend no more than $18. Put a little dollar sign there. So if I buy rope A and B, I need 15 feet. But rope A is 60 cents and B is 90 cents. And I need, when I add how much money I spend, I need it to be less than 18. So here's what I'm going to do I'm going to convert this to X and Y. I'm going to say x plus y is greater than or equal to 15. And I'm going to do 0.60x plus 0.90y uh, is less than or equal to 18. And I'm going to do that. Now, whenever we solve systems, remember the only way to solve a system is by graphing when you have inequalities. So I'm going to take this first one and I'm going to get y is greater than or equal to I'm going to move the x, so I'm going to subtract x from both sides. When I subtract x, this will go away. And when I subtract x, I'll have subtract x, and then I'll have plus 15. This one, I'm going to have to do a little more work on that one. Now, whenever I solve inequalities, I all, in systems in general, I box it in because you get so much work on your paper, it's hard to figure out what you're doing. So I'm going to move, I'm going to subtract 0.60x from both sides, and I'm going to come over here and do that. So that's going to leave me with 0.90y less than or equal to, and then I'm subtracting here, negative 0.60x plus 18. I'm going to divide both sides by 0.90. So here's what I'm going to get y is less than or equal to, and I'm going to get my calculator out, I'm going to do alpha y equals negative 0.6 on top and 0.9 on bottom. It gives it as a decimal, so I'm going to do math, enter, enter, and it gives it to me as negative two-thirds. So I'm going to have negative 2 over 3x, and then we'll do 18 divided by 0.9, and that's 20 positive 20. And I'm going to box that in because that's going to be what I'm graphing. So those are my ones that I'm graphing. So let's come over here and let's look at what we want to do. So I think since these are in terms of 15, um, 1, 2, let's see, this will be 0 and 0. Um, let's go ahead and do, do you think 1 on these? It, it's kind of weird how this is. I think we'll just do by ones maybe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yeah, I think we'll do that. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Let's do this side by twos. So zero. So that'll be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. No, that won't be enough. So let's do 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. All right, so let's graph. Um, let's do this one first. So 15 is going to be right here. And these we were doing by ones. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Slope is down 1 over 1. So I could also go, let's see, this is 15. So down 1 over 1. Down 1 over 1. So remember, you're doing like half steps. Down 1 over 1. Okay, I'm going to turn my paper just because of the way this is. And, oh, you know what? I should probably see. 
Let's do this. I want to know where it's going to cross here, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to go y equals, I hadn't thought about that till just now, negative x plus 15. Let's graph it. There it is. Okay, so it's touching way over here. So um, let's, what do we want to do? Let's second table. Let's see if we can see over here. I see all these points. I want to know when does it cross the x-axis? There it is at 15, right? Okay, so I'm going to come over here at 15, and I'm going to put my dot. All right, so let me see if I can grab this. I wish I had a ruler. No, I'm looking around my room here, so if I have a ruler, I don't. Okay, I'm going to try and use my pen. All right, hey, that worked pretty good. All right, so Y is bigger than that. So that means this would be shading up. Let me get my pencil. Oh my gosh, funny story. I ordered this pencil on Amazon. I thought I ordered about 12 of them because they were $4 for the 12. Yeah, it was one pencil, y'all. One lonely pencil for four bucks. Yeah. Apparently it's a prism co Prisma color. Apparently that's some great pencil. I don't know. I don't know about y'all. I don't think it colors that great. Whatever. Okay, so here this is. So there's this one. Greater than. All right, so now I'm going to graph the other one. I'll do it in black. So we're going to start up here at 20. This one is going to go down 2 over 3. So I'm going to try and do this. I know it's half steps. Down 2 over 1, 2, 3. Down 2 over 1, 2, 3. Down two over one two three, down two 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 one two three. I'm gonna run out of room. All right, so I'm gonna try and graph this one. I should have done that, I guess, by more, huh? That was gonna go there. Now this one is going to shade down, right? Because it's less than, so it's going to shade this way. So, well, you know what, I'll use, I guess I'll use black. It would go this way, right? So that means all this area right here in the middle, this is the overlapping area. So all possible combinations would be in here somewhere. Right? There we go. Hey, that wasn't too bad. You did pretty good. I don't know why my computer froze on me a while ago. All right, so here we go. What is the slope of this graph? Oh, this is a, hmm, what kind of line is this? Most of you are going, oh, it's an undefined slope. Okay, be real quick about getting that. Undefined starts with U. The word that goes with that is VUX. VUX is X equals, hmm, what is X equal? negative 2. So there it is. What is the equation of the line? x equals negative 2. I actually did that wrong. The slope would be undefined. Okay, what is the slope of the other one? That is a horizontal line. Horizontal starts with an h, o, y equals. That would be a zero slope. What's the equation of that line? y equals negative 2. <coughs> All right. Number 9. Mallory is saving money to buy her mom a really cool Christmas gift. She figures she can save $52 a month from her babysitting money. Uh, she has $25 already saved up. Write an inequality that can be used to find out how many months it will take her to save. $364. Do not solve. All right. How much money is she wanting to save? There's my total, 364. Does she want to save more than that or less than that? She wants to save at least that, right? So more than that would be better. So remember, make your L's. Whichever hand makes the L, that's less than. That's less than. So this makes an L. This one makes a backwards L. This is less than. So that means this one's greater than. So we're going to go that way with it. So we want to have more than that or at least that because we're going to buy a really cool gift for mom. How much money does she already have? Okay, that's going to go first. She's going to save $52 a month from babysitting. She must babysit a lot. So 25 plus 
$52 every month. There we go. <clears throat> All right. Write the system of equations from the table. Now, there are a couple different ways we can do this, and I'm going to show you the easy way, and then I know some of my um, honors kids that are probably watching this want to do it by hand. To do it by hand, cover up one column and find the slope or the y-intercept, whichever way you want to do it. And can you see the y-intercept? I sure can. Zero, one. So think of it like this. Equation one, what's the y-intercept? Oh, they actually did that for me right there. Let's do that. The y-intercept is, yeah, right here is your y-intercepts. So equation one, the y-intercept is one. And then if I cover up the middle, what's the y-intercept of equation two? Yeah, it's two. So I need to know the slope of each. Now, you can pick two equations, find the slope of each, but I also want to remind you that you have a stat button on your calculator, stat edit, and we can plug in that data. So remember, I'm going to cover this up right here. I'm going to do it one column at a time. So I would have zero, enter, one, in, oh, it didn't like that, stat, edit. Okay, here we go. So we're going to do zero, enter, one, enter, two, enter, three, enter, four. And then we're going to do one, four, seven, 10 and 13. I'm going to go back to stat, calculate, linear regression. We're doing lines. 4, enter, 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 enter. And remember, A is my slope. What's my slope? It's 3. 3 and 1. It actually gave it to me, didn't it? So there's my 3. Bye. So Y equals 3X plus 1. There's my first equation. My second equation? I'm going to go back up here. I'm going to go to stat, calculate. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Cat, stat, edit. Now, I don't need to change my first column because it's still the same, but I do need to change my second column. So I'm going to go up to L2, hit clear a couple times, move it down. 2, enter, 0, enter, negative 2, enter, negative 4, enter, negative 6, enter. Stat, calculate, number 4. There it is, negative 2 and 2. So my m is negative 2. So y equals negative 2x plus 2. How awesome was that? So when you're given tables, know that you've got those regressions you can do. Those make it so much easier. All right, which inequality best represents the equation of the line graph? Now, we left you a little room on this one to work because we knew this was going to take a little bit of time. I'm going to show you a couple of cheats. They're not going to help us exactly on this one, but, you know, we'll try. This is a dashed line, so that means it's not equal to. Unfortunately, all of these are not equal to, right? This is also a negative slope line, so I'm going to be able to rule out something. So here's what we're going to do. We're just going to start with this first one. We're going to take, I'm going to switch to my black. We're going to take 2x plus 5y greater than negative 5. Move the x, divide the y. So let's move the x. So 5y greater than negative 2x minus 5. I'm going to divide by 5. So y is greater than negative 2 fifths x minus 1. Okay, negative 1. Hey, that worked. Let's go down 2 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That would actually be something like that, wouldn't it? So it's actually not this one. Okay, but here's what I noticed. This worked out perfect. I had a negative and a negative. So if I have a positive, a positive right here, that's going to give me what I need over there. I'm going to wait to work this one because that negative right there, that's going to flip my slope. You may not realize that. But if you work this one and it was almost right, find one that's real close to that. So maybe C. Maybe C would be a better choice. So let's try that. So I'm going to put an A right here so that I know which one that was. So let's work C. 5X <coughs> plus 2Y. I'm going to actually make that darker so I know. Greater than negative 2. <coughs> Excuse me. Move the X. 
2y greater than negative 5x minus 2. Divide the y. Oh, yeah, you can take it. Okay. y is greater than negative 5 over 2x minus 1. Okay, so I'm going to graph this one in orange. Negative 1, boom, still good. This time we're going to go down 5 and over 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2. Oh, yeah. Look, I'm right on that line. Let's go up and back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2. There it is. I'm right on there. Shading, I would take it, turn it clockwise, so it would shade up. So that would be this way. Yep, there it is. All right, I hope that helped. All right, and that concludes Teak 2. Thanks for watching, guys.